Statistics show that on average it takes four years to finish your PhD in the UK and six to do so in the US. And a lot of people take even longer to finish, which means your funding might run out and then you need to pay out of pocket to find a job which delays things further. And every extra year you spend on your PhD, you're also missing out on pretty decent salary in academia or outside of academia. So how do you finish your PhD faster? Well, in this video, I will show you 10 proven hacks that will help you to graduate with your PhD faster without working 60 or more hours a week and without feeling stressed. These exact same hacks allowed me to finish my PhD at the University of York in just three years with three published papers while working part-time as a university lecturer. And these hacks will also work even if you're in the third or fourth year of your PhD. Michael Phelps is the most decorated Olympian of all times. At the peak of his powers, he was absolutely unstoppable. How did he do it? Well, talent and physique aside, he trained every single day. That's 365 days a year, including Sundays, holidays, his own birthday. If you want to get good at something, you need to train. So if you want to finish your PhD fast with an exceptional thesis and papers published in top journals, you need to write every single day, even if it's just one paragraph. But this isn't going to work if you constantly switch between different things. Well, try listening to this video, reading a paper and talking to your spouse. It's just not possible. And your spouse will probably slap you for not paying attention to her. Research clearly shows that we cannot focus on more than one task. Past two tasks, our productivity plummets exponentially to almost zero. That's why you need to divide your work into batches. For example, between 8 and 10 a.m. you're going to be doing writing. And then between 10 a.m. and 12 p.m. you're going to be in the lab. And for those two hours you only do that and nothing else. Which brings me to the next point. Did you know that it takes about 20 minutes to gain back focus after a distraction? So if you get distracted twice in an hour, you've just lost 40 minutes of focused work. That's why you want to minimize or eliminate all distractions as much as possible. So avoid the office like the plague if you have to do focused work. While your colleagues might be nice, you'll constantly get distracted. During my PhD, I was notorious for never being in the office. I stayed at home and worked on my PhD. Perhaps some might have thought that I was antisocial, but then I finished my PhD in three years and published three papers. And I kept my social life to after work. So what I would recommend is that you find a quiet spot, be it at home or somewhere else, that is free of distractions where you're going to focus on your writing and on your PhD work. Aside from not going to the office, there was also one other critical thing that I was not doing, but I'll get to that in a second. When I was doing my PhD, I thought my research was the best in the world and that my writing was amazing. So how dare my supervisor criticize it? How dare he point out mistakes? In my writing. But the more energy I spend arguing against the suggestions of my supervisor, the less energy I actually had to implement those suggestions and improve my thesis and publish papers. Like trying a w to win an argument with your supervisor is like trying to outswim a shark in the sea. You will either lose or get eaten up alive. Plus, most supervisors really know what they're talking about and they're not mean. They really want you to finish your PhD because it's in their own best self-interest. So accept your supervisor's criticisms and act on them. It will only make your thesis and papers better faster and you will be able to finish your PhD sooner. Now, none of this is going to work until you implement hack number five. So while three, four or five years of a PhD seem like a long time, they fly by really quickly. And going about a PhD without a plan is like trying to sail the ocean without a compass, without a map and without a GPS. You'll get lost at best and get eaten by a shark um, at worst. That's why you really need a plan. 
First, you need to set clear, achievable goals for the whole PhD. This will be your compass or your North Star that will allow you to sail in the right direction when you're at sea. And then you need to break this, these major goals for the whole PhD into yearly goals and into semester goals. And then you need to further break these down into weekly and daily tasks that you can actually put on your calendar. And then you need to actually place them on your calendar and block your calendar as busy. This is the most high priority meeting that you can possibly have, even though it's just with yourself. So don't miss that meeting. Did you know that 47% of PhD students express feeling constant stress and many work 50 or 60 plus hours a week? But this is a foolproof way to get burned out and it's actually much less productive. Research shows that taking weekends off have a significant impact on your happiness, mental and physical well-being, and on your job performance. Taking weekends off also reduces stress and the likelihood of burnout. So if you want to write better papers or your thesis faster, you need to take weekends off. But the key is that you truly need to disconnect. So no phone, no emails, no notifications, no checking what's going on with your lab experiments. Ideally, spend some time with the people you love, with your friends, with your family, and ideally somewhere in the nature. Now, if you combine weekends off with exercise, you will become absolutely unbeatable. Exercise helps to reduce stress. It increases your mental well-being and job satisfaction. It also improves job performance. And during my PhD, I went to the gym four times a week. But you can also go just for a short walk in a nearby park. Even a 10 minute exercise has been proven to increase your ability to focus and increase your job performance. So not to mention that you will also feel better, look better and live longer. So doing exercise regularly during your PhD and after for that matter is an absolute no brainer. Have you ever found yourself rewriting the same text over and over again and thinking to yourself, is it good enough? This is really counterproductive because you get stuck and delay finishing whatever it is that you need to finish. So my attitude during my PhD that really allowed me to finish it in three years with three published papers was very simple. Good enough is good enough. So produce good enough work as soon as possible and get feedback on it as soon as possible. Then act on that feedback and repeat. This meant I could produce more work much faster. It also meant my writing improved faster because I was getting feedback more often. Perfectionism is a delusion that is stopping you from achieving your writing goals faster. And rather than try to produce a perfect piece of writing in your first go, make sure that it's just good enough and then move on. Of course, this really isn't going to work unless you're getting feedback and unless you have somebody who can mentor you on how to write papers and your thesis. I was very lucky with my PhD supervisor that he gave me plenty of feedback on my writing. He was always there to offer suggestions on how to improve. And he was very good as well at explaining what a really good research paper should look like. So thanks a lot, Andy. But the thing about most PhD supervisors, unfortunately, is that they're very busy. So you get feedback maybe once a month or once every three months. And many supervisors aren't that good at explaining specifically how to write a paper or a thesis step by step. They expect you to figure it out on your own through trial and error. And it's not their fault really, because the primary expertise really is research. But that's why you need a writing mentor. Someone that not only has published papers, but also has the ability to explain to you step by step how to do this and will give you feedback regularly. And this is exactly what we do on Published Researcher. You can work with a mentor who's coached more than 100 PhD students and researchers to publish papers and get feedback from them every single week in a maximum of three working days. Just imagine how quickly your writing will improve and how many more papers will, will you publish if you're able to work with a coach like this. And if this is something that you're interested in, schedule a free one-to-one -one consultation and we'll see if working together is a good fit. No, but 
even the greatest supervisor or working with us at Academic English Now to help you improve your papers won't help you if you don't act on your feedback. My simple attitude to feedback that allowed me to finish my PhD in three years with three papers was to just get on with it, even if that feedback hurt or was very uncomfortable. Think about it, your supervisor has already done the PhD, right? So the feedback they're giving you can only make your writing better. And it's in their own best self-interest that your writing improves and you finish your PhD and you publish papers because your supervisor's name goes on your papers and they get credit for you being an amazing PhD student. So the faster you implement the feedback, the better your papers or thesis will become faster and the faster you will finish your PhD. But did you know that there are around 250,000 PhD students graduating around the world every single year? So this means that having a PhD on its own isn't that special anymore. What you really need is papers in high impact journals and you need a lot of them. So that's why in this next video, I will show you a proven system that is guaranteed to give you three or more papers every single year in high impact journals without rejections. We've implemented this system with 460 and more PhD students to help them publish papers as well. So watch this next video to get that system to publish more papers every single year.